right now. Welcome to Fort Fritz, your one stop for news, current events, and all forms of entertainment relating to the paranormal, the supernatural, the Fortean, and things that go whoo, bump in the night. All packaged and presented in the form of know nothing, know it alls, entertaining the unknown. Hello, I am your host, Fritz, and for the next hour, I will be joined by co host Angela. Hello. And co host Kaz. Hey. Co host. Co host. You guys are co hosts. Official co hosts. Co host Man Daddy has the night off. So uh, I would be remiss if I don't uh, mention this right off the bat. You can always reach out to us. Text in at any time, 77031, powered by Sutherland Nissan, and just ask us anything you want to, if it's uh, you know top of mind, if we're talking about an entertainment piece or even a current event uh, in, in regards to the supernatural. If you have something you want to say, we want to hear it. So just text in 77031. I will be answering all of your texts the entire night. We begin... With a voicemail from our our good friend, friend of the show, Amanda. She Amanda. actually heard our August second broadcast. I have a tight back. That was with Miss Sabrina Ambra. Okay, just nice. look it up on the iHeartRadio app or wherever you get your podcasts. She heard our story about a Kentucky noise that this man was filming on his cell phone, and Amanda texted in at seven seven zero three one and said. This reminds me of something. I said, well, why don't you give us a call? Give us a call at 570-4-R-T-F-R-T-Z. Area code 570-478-3789. 570-Fort-Fritz. Give us a call. Amanda did, and this is what she has to say. Hi, this is Amanda. I just heard your um, howling sounds in Kentucky on the radio in 2007. My aunt and I went to the rainforest in Brazil, and we spent two weeks going down the Amazon, camping out. We had a tour guide, and we were sleeping in hammocks between the trees. So on the first night, we had had a couple of happy arenas and uh, went to sleep. And I woke up sometime in the middle of the night hearing this, like, very faint, like, whirling, swishing sound. And then it got closer and closer, and I was just starting to really get freaked out and as it got closer it sounded more like this roaring yelling sound yeah. and God. it was just getting closer and closer and closer mm. and I got a migraine because I oh was my so God. scared and oh. soon it was on top of us in the trees on top of us and it was this horrendous um, howling, roaring sound. What? And our tour guide like comes stumbling over, and he's like, "Oh, by the way, don't worry about that. Those are howler monkeys. They won't, they won't bother you." <sighs> oh, okay. They just cross over in the trees above, and I leaned over the side of my hammock and just vomited. I was so <laughs> out having listened to them for the last hour. Amanda, I'm getting closer and closer to us, and so. Eventually, we saw them up close, and they were very sweet and friendly, but, God, they make a horrifying, terrifying, terrifying sound yeah. at night. Anyway, hopefully you can look up a clip and play it. It's very interesting. Thank God we don't have them in Florida. Have your show. <laughs> thing. Aww, Thank you, Amanda. Thanks, Amanda. Amanda, what a great story. Yeah. For, first of all, the life that you must lead to be able to be sleeping in between trees in the Amazon, sipping caipirinhas, and, you know, listening to the nightmarish sound of howler monkeys all over you. What a life. <laughs> right? Yeah. So uh, I did look up what howler monkeys sound like. And oh, here we go. This is from National Geographic, but let's see if we can hear what they In the middle of the night in a hammock. Chilling in the rainforest. In the rainforest. This is a national... Like monsters. Oh, my God. Like monsters. Howler monkeys Dude, that is terrifying. Right? Bone in their throats. Okay. And then nerd says nerd stuff. But <laughs> that that is absolutely terrifying. Yeah. Imagine, like, hearing that in the distance Duh, and no. coming closer and closer to you, that would sound pretty terrifying. Yeah. I, I don't want to mess around with that no. at all. Amanda, thank you so much for reaching out to us again. 570-4783-789. 570-4-R-T-F-R-T-Z. We don't exactly know what happens to us after death, but the New York Post posted just a couple of, uh, of days ago, is a ghost terrorizing this bar. Let's take a listen. We don't know what happens to us, but the New York Post does. This is a pub called uh, Micker, Micker Brook Bar in Greater Manchester, England. Wait, shut up. There is a glass 
the... What is that? Glasses. There's a glass here. Okay. And then what's going to happen? Oh, it gets just tossed off the side. Of... <laughs> what? That's a face of girl. That's not what we're getting no more. The employee hears it, hears and sees something oh. falls off. There's no one around, and the employee just kind of goes, okay, and is just staring at it. Oh. So. Oh, yeah. Really, really cool. I'd uh, react just the way that girl did. Yeah. Staffers have named the spirit Harry and claim oh, that's nice. he haunts this pub, whatever, but, uh, and he's an unwanted regular. But yeah, let's go back and hear this terrified scream. It's at realradio.fm if you want to check it out. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, exactly. That is exactly the noise uh, you made. Yeah, yeah. By the way, that was at one oh seven in the morning. And man, there have been so many great videos like that out and about. This is a space station feed. The International Space Station caught a craft on the live feed. There's a live feed you can watch at all times, 24 hours a day. This was a video submitted, and uh, this is from a YouTube commentary video. I'm, I'm going to play maybe like the first minute, and then I'm, I'm going to skip ahead, because something very, very strange happens in this video. So let's take a listen. In the camera, like I'm about to show you, it's right there. So you see this, oh, like, okay. I zoom this in, orb kind of thing? Uh-huh. The contrast, the lighting. He zooms in and sees a triangular craft. This the words ISS just appear in space. In fact, <laughs> this object I think he did that with the video oh, editing program. Yeah. When he zooms in on it, and, uh, you know, again, go to realradio.fm, click on shows and blogs. If it's not trending, I hope it is, because this is really, this is, this is like the real deal, right? NASA wouldn't do this as a hoax. Uh, it's like, this was September whatever. It was like a week ago. NASA doesn't hoax people, you would hope. Right. Hopefully not. Let's just skip ahead a little bit. There? And let's see what happens. And then all of a sudden, it's going to take off and just disappear rather quickly. Okay, see it level out? And there it goes. Oh. And it's gone. Oh. The space station is... So wow. that is an anomalous object. Um, I would say UAP, but Ariel really wouldn't figure into this. Right. So what do you think it is? That's a low Earth orbit object that took off on, on its own accord quickly. I think that... Uh... It's fortunate that we got to see that because, uh, like, I think we talked about the um, the times that the ISS feed and there's also other like satellite feeds get cut off. Yeah. And there was like a whole story about that, like when they they are unavailable to you for brief periods of time and then they come back on. Like, what's going on? Exactly. There? So it's interesting that this is something that is you know anomalous, and we got we got a chance to see it. I just have a hard time looking at that video trying to figure out wh how far away it is and how big it is right thank you for you know bringing that up one of the the main skept skeptics argument is you don't know how y you have no relation as far as what nasa is doing on their live iss feed you you don't know how far away from the earth they are right they don't really give that kind of specs it's just this camera's live and let's you know flex a little bit and show you what we're doing in space right which is cool you know total yeah. transparency but you have this is not the first time we've seen a, an ISS feed with an object orbiting or hovering around the Earth mm -hmm. and then just taking off. Because a satellite couldn't just take just off kind of like that. kind of floats there, right, exactly. Yeah. They're kind of... Maybe it's Elon Musk's car? Oh, yeah. It was, it was just up there just still floating, <laughs> and then you got like a, like a little burst of gas and then you and got a little off. Tesla power and just yeah. went for it. <laughs> you think a car can fly in space? Yeah, I mean... Musk did it, man. Well, it's orbiting, right? It can't like drive away. There's no road. Is it's it not... orbiting or was it just sent out it's somewhere? Or is it just, orbiting? You just basically shot trash in this. I got, I hope it's so far away from Earth right now because, like, if it falls back in anyway, uh, <laughs> I would like to end on a topic that is extremely scary and spooky and personal to oh. a lot of people. Oh, love. Yeah, it's oh, yeah. a little love. spooky. Yep. What is it? What do you guys know about NDE? What does that stand for? Near death. We did this. Near, near death, death experience. Oh, yeah. Yes. So this is a story about two people who shared the same near death experience. There's a new book out called Waking Up to Love, written by Dr. Scarlett Heinbuck. That's H-E-I-N-B-U-C-H, if you would like to check it out. I love the first name, Scarlett. This is a shared death or near death experience, and that is someone who is present at the death or near death of another person who will actually perceive along with them Many of the elements that are a common feature of NDEs, such as they will themselves experience floating, a sensation of a disembodiment. And um, this person who was near death, she was called and she is a R Reiki, 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 Reiki mm -hmm. energy, th like okay. a specialist. Mm -hmm. So she places her hands on this patient, hither divorce unknown to her. 
and uh, immediately got this sensation and was almost like hallucinating and saw this man standing with his back to her in this like white room. This man turns to her, locks eyes with her, and they have, you know, one of those Scooby-Doo moments of egads. She Zoinks. she snaps out of it. Then his vitals start improving. Again, this man was in a in a comatose state, near death within a couple of days. They don't go. Uh, th- this article, by the way, is a uh, Sharon Sharon Rowlett. So it's uh you know Sharon and then R A W L E T T E dot WordPress dot com. The couple who met in a near death experience. He gets what? better, comes to, finds out that's the person he saw as he was trying to cross over, wondering if he should cross over, if it was his time or not. He sees her. They're looking at one another again. She's just, you know, in real time with her hands on this person's body. They end up getting married. What? Yeah. Interesting. But uh, what? How There's does... so many questions. I have, first of all, were they in the same town? Was that discussed? Like what? How do they meet? Um, she drove to the hospital, I don't, so I she think was that doing was the first thing. Reiki on coma patients. That's yeah. a pretty. That's pretty advanced. I will say that the idea of crossing over belies kind of like a Christian idea of the afterlife, and somebody who is a Reiki practitioner probably mm-hmm. doesn't necessarily. I think they're I called. Painting, I think they're called Reiki masters. I would say cross, you know, maybe novice or you know journeyman. <laughs> you, like, you can't automatically be a master. Go Cass, ahead. allow me to say maybe sectarian, not necessarily Christian, but some kind of religious. Yes. Yeah. Background, yeah. Right? That's yes. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. That's correct. To kind of that's the way we put that. Um, so yeah, I like it would, it's an interesting, uh, combo of ideas of energy and that, that type of thing. So uh, also the idea that like somebody's going out and doing like Reiki on like coma patients is cool as hell. Like I yeah. think that's a thing. Like that's badass, I especially know. if they can come out of it and fall in love with you. Like that's, let's yeah, do it all over the place. Yeah. Let's do it all over the place. I'll yeah. go into a coma right now. <laughs> <laughs> When I go into a coma, bring me a Reiki master. <laughs> Definitely. A very beautiful one. So, um, you First know, name's Scarlet. Reiki, Scarlet. Reiki is, is an energy, uh, like esotericism, and it's a pseudoscience, but it's, it's based on a universal energy, that yeah. universal thought consciousness kind of thing. But uh, I just thought that was really, really That's interesting. Fascinating. Uh, there's a podcast called Mysterious Universe, and you hear me source cite that a lot. Uh, Mysterious Universe is an, is an absolutely outstanding podcast, and it got me into radio along with the news junk. Because I don't say that enough. The News Junkie was the show I heard. It was a brand new show. It was the midday s- slot right here on Real Radio 104.1. Got me back into radio. And M- Mysterious Universe kind of cultivated my mind to get back into a podcast, Supernatural kind of thing. Nice. And they had one story where this this man was sitting with his uh, father who was dying. He was a Vietnam vet. He grabbed his hand and saw this orb leave his father. When he looked up at it, he was overlooking in a tree his father in a river in Vietnam. He, by the way, was the last of his platoon who was still living. And he saw, like, on the other side of the river, six or seven men calling out to him saying, come on, swim over, swim over. Like, it was his platoon, and they were all in military fatigues. And he he likens that to, because of the r- rigorous upbringing of the military, you have to be that person who never gives up, never surrenders. Right. He saw his father look up at him in the trees and swam over to the other side and his brothers in arms kind of pulled him out and he got out of the shared near death experience and his father was passing. Wow. And that was on Mysterious Universe. Kind of cool. I mean, so this kind of stuff happens. So again, if you're out there listening, maybe death is just that. If you are uh, of a religious mindset, keep it up. If you're not, I think that's okay too. Death is just one of those things that happens to everyone. Kind of like hopefully living. I hope everyone has that opportunity to live. Death maybe shouldn't be feared or shied away from. And on that note, uh, we're going to take a little break. You are listening to Fort Fritz right here on Real Radio 104.1. Fort Fritz on Real Radio 104.1. Welcome back to Fort Fritz right here on Real Radio 104.1. I am your host, Fritz, joined as always by Kaz. Hey. And Angela. Hello. We are an iHeartRadio station. We encourage you to download that absolutely free iHeartRadio app. Search Fort Fritz. We have a musical episode we did. We also have a choose your own adventure, and I say that with air quotes. There's four different stories. That's called Autonomous Decision Selection Game. Just go ahead and download that app and search Fort Fritz. Angela. 
You have a bunch of stuff you said you want to get to? Let's get to it. I have a bunch of things. So speaking of the fact that we live in Orlando, Central Florida, we obviously have all the theme parks here. So I'm going to be talking about Disney. They just opened up something called the Skyliner. The Skyliner? The Skyliner. And it's those gondolas, like things that like ski resorts. Mm -hmm. They're on those cables. They have you in these little gondola cart things. And I, I guess they used to have them a long time ago in one of the parks. Magic Kingdom, it would take you from one area to Tomorrowland, I think. Okay. So, but they just made this entire, like, system that connects Hollywood Studios, which used to be called MGM, and Epcot, and a couple of the resorts. So there's Art Pop, um, Caribbean Beach, and Riviera Resort, which is a new one, which is kind of like um, like a Mediterranean resort type of thing. Ooh, all right. So... We got on at Hollywood Studios. This is you and Mr. Angela? Me, Mr. Angela, and a couple friends. Ooh, a couple Angelas, A couple maybe? of Angelas, maybe. So we got on Hollywood Studios, and then it takes you to Caribbean Beach, or Caribbean Beach. How would How you? you? Uh, I don't it doesn't know. Yeah, what it doesn't is matter. the? <laughs> and that's kind of like a main hub. From there, you can either go to a couple other of the resorts, or you can go back to Hollywood Studios, or that takes you over to... Riviera Resort that can also take you to Epcot and it's really beautiful and I went at around seven o'clock when the sun was setting oh, nice. and I have like a couple a golden hour oh it was gorgeous and it's beautiful there's no air conditioning but it doesn't matter because you're it so like high heaven. up and they opened up there's like there's a vent system with it so as you're up and you're moving the air flows through and it cools you off and you do kind of get little like ding ding little notifications like you're going over blah 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 right now but for the most part it's pretty silent and it's very chill and it's very relaxing every now and then it just goes ding ding your life is not in danger right ding ding why would it say that you're 200 (laughs) feet up in the air if you felt suspended by a cable yeah you have no control over your life right now you'd have nine seconds of terror (laughs) joy (laughs) it'd be terrible and it moves at a really like lovely pace you don't feel too doesn't feel too fast. Doesn't feel too slow. It's very sm- the ride's very smooth. But as you're well. booking it right at the same oh, time. Oh yeah, it's it's pretty quick, and it's very and I think it's ten people per little gondola cart. Um, so we were in there with like eight people at a time. Felt really nice, and everyone just kind of chills. And were you just riding the to... gondola around? Or were you getting out? Like you're just like, yo, run well, it back. Let's do that. Well, do you I, once you get to specific destinations that kind of make you get out of it okay. certain ones you can be like no we're staying and they're like oh, okay and they just kind of like let you keep because it's one of those things where it kind of keeps moving that was a good question Ken. yeah I, it is. I, I was thinking I, it's like kind of like running the subway you know i would kind of i would just chill in off. the gondola all day like i, I mean yeah. i feel like you could yeah and the way that they had it set up for us it was like a the like cast members only. So I was going with someone who works there, but I don't know how it is. If you actually have to have a ticket or pay for it. Cause it was outside of the park. Oh. If you know, you can actually go to the resorts and just get on the monorail. You don't have to have a ticket to do that. Some, some of like, if you just go and park at a resort, you can just get the monorail. You don't have to have a Disney pass. Disney secrets. Yeah. So if you ever want to do a monorail crawl through all the resorts, it's pretty great. Yeah. I'm all good right. this weekend. If you guys want to yeah, go, it's pretty great. It's pretty fun. Cause then you're just sitting in a monorail and just going to the next resort and drinking at all the resort bars. Man, Texas seven, seven, zero three, one. If you've just done that before, it's we want to know. Like I was saying, I think it just keeps moving so you can get off really quickly. And I will say if you have been drinking, I was completely sober and it was like a little like, Oh, you better get off like really quickly and have your footing correctly. Otherwise so don't drink and do it. You know, no. <laughs> yeah. <I don't> know. <laughs> and they started this project. Disney's insane, by the way, the I way love that they do things. We're actually going to have videos posted at a uh, real radio.fm. Um, the engineering of this is beautiful. Is that what's spooky about it? Like it's spooky because it's like, uh, you're, you're flirting with death the entire time and not really. I think if you're afraid of heights, it probably kind of messes with you a little bit. Yeah. I feel I'm, like that's part of the gondola experience. It's just like, they could, they don't have to show you that it is just suspended by a cable. They could all like uh, obfuscate all that, right? But like, you're kind of like, uh, Good one. maybe this will just that's like, we, maybe not right. give way right now, hopefully. Well, we are riding with people and every single time it got to a, if it got to a resort, because it kind of almost resets itself. It goes like on another little, little like a wheel that kind of, uh, that's turning it. So okay. if that takeoff, when you're going up, some some people we, we'd be in the cart with or gondola with, they'd be like, oh, I don't like this part. No, Where that's scary. Because you, you'd go down and then you'd go up. Uh, why? And then you'd be up really high and then you come down and some of like the takeoff kind of freak people out a little bit. 
Sly but, and the Family Stone playing, I want to take you high. Yeah, it just keeps going just up. It keeps like, going. You're like, oh, God. What the hell? We're going what, to the even sun. is up here. Yeah. <laughs> this is not Disney anymore. But it was, um, <laughs> the ride itself was really smooth. As you're, It was very peaceful. Cool. I loved it. All right. I took lots of videos and I, I took some time lapse videos too. So that's cool. Yeah. And that, that's at realradio.fm. Yes. And then the other thing I did at Disney, we went back to studios after riding the Skyliner. Disney opened up their Star Wars Galaxy Edge and yep. Hollywood Studios. Oh, let me play it. There you go. Have you guys been there? No. Mm-hmm. I've never been to Disney ever. Not even one time. One of our, uh, we need to rectify that, but uh, our um, sister show right here at Real Radio 104.1 is um, the Theme Park co- uh, Podcast every yeah. Saturday at 8 a.m. You can hear that. Uh, Dickerman yeah. and Jimmy D and Scott Harris. Good uh, guys. They've covered this and oh, it's yeah. always looked interesting. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, so since they have covered this, I'll go over it really quickly. I will say, I don't know all of the Star Wars lore. I've seen most of the movies. I actually don't even think I saw episodes one through three. Like I know I the- hate Han Solo now because of cast. I gave a I gave a hot take like if you'd like to well, how many episodes was that? Like, two. Which one did you hate? Uh, Return of Jedi. Yes, that was that, that's the one that's with the little bears in the forest. Ewoks. Ewoks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Ewoks. Yeah, yeah, it was good. It was all right, but just Han Solo was just rubbing the wrong way. Anyway, go ahead. Continue. That, sorry. That episode is called Han's Dude Bro Taint of the Universe. You check it out. <laughs> Such a dude. Bro. On He's the Radio. biggest dude, bro. Ugh. I didn't actually hate the movie Solo. A lot of people did not like that movie, where they kind of go back in time, Han Solo being younger with and Chewie. How he became and, such a like prolific intergalactic dude, Douche bro. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, dude, bro, space, space, bro, space, dude, bro. <laughs> space, <laughs> space, bro. <laughs> um, so Galaxy's Edge, I will say. So first of all, the sight lines. Once you're in that area, the way that they have all of the effects and rocks and buildings and everything trees you can't see anything outside of it so once you're in that area you really feel like you're oh, in that world cool. all right so sight line again is what sight line is when you're standing in that park and you look outside of it towards the edges you can't see anything outside of it so you it, actually feel immersed within that world and then you turn a corner and then you're in Jurassic park it's a totally different thing and the cool thing is when you're walking from like the hollywood area of hollywood studios that whole like 1930s old school heyday so hollywood cool, right yeah golden which age. i love that it's beautiful that I, yeah. a lot of people don't like studios i really love studios it's great you walk through this little hallway that feels like you're walking through the subway and all of a sudden it looks very rock face and you're in star wars so the way that they transition you from the main park into that area is great cool like you really do kind of come from one world to the next everything about that world like batu everything all the language on everything all the the way that the fonts are looks very Star Wars, different world, different languages, all the merchandise, everything is very within that aesthetic of Star Wars. They immerse you. It's immersive. They really, really do make you feel like you're in that world. One of their gift shop it has the first animatronic like alien ever, like animatronic being in a gift shop. So most of their gift shops are really? gift shops. This is the first time they actually have an animatronic creature in there kind like of the like exo- acting. The exomorph or no, not the H.R. Giger. The Xenomorph. Yeah. That would be xenomorph. tight if there was a Xenomorph in the gift shop. It was shop. just a Star Wars alien, just like a creature sitting in gotcha. there acting like he's just doing things and That's talking oh, so he and everything. He wasn't selling you stuff. He was just hanging no, out. Okay, no, he was okay. just hanging out. And the the gift shops, didn't, you didn't feel like you were in a gift shop. You felt like like the market area, you felt like you were in a market, like a Star Wars market. You're That's in cool. one of the, it was, That is cool. It was amazing. I got to try the blue milk. That doesn't sound How good. was it? I, okay. Was it dope? It was dope. It was Kind of tasted like a candle. <laughs> <laughs> so not that dope, actually. Did you see how she paused and then the <laughs> slight scrunch of her brow? Kind of <laughs> tasted like a candle. But oh, here's the weird great. thing. I really liked it. And I got you can get it without alcohol or with alcohol. And the alcohol comes with this rum. Alcohol milk? It, but it's not milk. Oh, okay. But the, in the movies, and I don't even know which one, to be honest with you. They drink blue milk. And I don't know what the All heck right. that it is or what it's from. And I'm sure there's a bunch of Star Maybe Wars people out there scene. like... Probably a blue cow, blue so space I think cow. it has something to do with the cantina. They recreated the cantina, and you have to have a reservation, or you can kind of stand off to the side, wait late at night like we did on a Monday, and we actually got in. You get standby at the cantina. Yeah, and you go in, and it really it is. They made it just seem like just like the cantina, and they have all these weird alien creatures and boxes above you, and there's this amazing like DJ robot guy Boxed who's like aliens. talking and playing music. Cool, and it's like the kind of they have their own. Um, soundtrack and songs and theme music that's going on that's from movies and so like there's a whole 
list of songs that are just basically made for that cantina to play in. Like and the cantina song, right? Which is like... Bah, bah, yes. Bah, yeah, yeah, there's a lot of that. It's great. Right. So um, it was very, very fun. And the ride where you actually get to like be in the Millennium Falcon. Oh, so, really? Huh? So they actually, when you that. walk in the whole area, they actually have a whole life-size built Millennium Falcon. It's amazing. And the ride is, and I forgot the name of the ride is, um, but you you go in and like it's, you're basically on a, a team of six. And two people get chosen as pilots, two people are gunners, and two people are like, engineers. I have jobs on the ride. That's cool. I, I was really like intimidated at first because it, I was like, oh, God, a video game? Oh, I'm terrible. And, like, I got <laughs> I to gotta perform, otherwise everyone like hates me. Great. Yeah. I'd was, rather be man number one in the corner who's uh, just confused. I, was like, I thought it was just a ride. And my friends that were with me have been on it five times. They're like, okay, you got to do this. I'm like, you're stressing me out. <laughs> and I got chosen as a pilot. And I'm like, oh, great. So I was sitting there with my friend's husband. He was, I got to be actually Han Solo's seat. So I was sitting where like, Han Solo oh, is. Right. And then, so he was Chewy. And then he had two people as gunners and then two people as engineers. So as my seat was just, I'm left and right. He was up and down. The people who are gunners are obviously shooting things, and the yeah. people who are engineers, if anything's going quote unquote wrong, like buttons are, be- they just have to press the buttons to make sure. Like, so it's a teamwork. So you All have right. six people, and it's a simulated game. Cool. And it's a whole thing with the the. I think it's the Kessel Run. So you have to go after this one train. It's a whole like you're basically tr- chasing these people to get something off of. So so. And this one guy's yelling at you what to do. And so my whole thing was, I'm just trying not to hit things. And we're and like, other people are shooting things. And we actually got pretty far. And so the the people that I was with had played this a bunch of times. They're like, that was the furthest we got in that game. Oh, cool. So, so it's a pass fail. You can yes. get all the way to the end or you can screw yes. it up. Okay, yeah. that is yeah. pretty cool. It is pretty great. Yeah. And so I guess it's time. So at a certain point, like it's kind of over and whatever. It was great. It was amazing. So that's the edge of the... Galaxy's Edge. Galaxy's Edge. Galaxy Edge Star Wars at uh, Hollywood Studios at Disney. Very, very cool. Yeah. Well, let's take a little break. Coming up, Kaz, you got video game reviews for us. Mm. And also an interaction with a Fort Fritz fan. Oh, yes. You are listening to Fort Fritz right here on Real Radio 104.1. Fort Fritz. On Real Radio 104.1. Welcome to Fort Fritz on Real Radio 104.1. I am Fritz, joined as always by co-host Angela. Hello. And co-host Kaz. We got promoted again, yay! Yeah! Kaz, do you know anything about video games? Uh, You know, a thing or two. Um, Like what? To me, it's the new interactive art form. It's it's a new art form that is being explored to tell stories that in the past, it was kind of like, do-do-do, Mario, jump on a turtle, whatever. Now there's like art that is coming out that people are spending a lot of time thinking about writing, creating the visuals for. It's, it's, It's a burgeoning, burgeoning new art form. So uh, in that vein, um, we talked about The Last of Us uh, 2 is coming out. That was last week, yep. And we got a a pretty significant um, interest from that. A lot of people wanted to talk about it. And one of the people, uh, one of our fans, Corey Deering. Corey! Good first name. Friend of the show. uh, So Corey Deering heard our our bit about Last of Us, was intrigued, and and wanted to know if we had ever uh, at the fort uh, gotten into the Mafia series. Mafia is another game series. Now, how did he reach out to us? Uh, through Facebook. We are on Facebook. Oh, we're yeah. on Twitter. We're on Instagram. We're on Spotify. We're on Google. We're on <clears throat> Carrier you Pigeon, yep. Smoke Signals, like whatever you got. Semaphore. Like, Pony Express, <laughs> like whatever. Oh, the ponies are the best. Figure it out. They are. They're so cute. You can get to us. So uh, Corey Deering reached out over Facebook, and he wanted to know if we had ever uh, gotten into the Mafia series because he had recently heard that there was some news that Mafia 4 was going to be coming out. And I will say that Mafia, in addition to a litany of Grand Theft Auto clones is one of those things that probably flew under your radar. Grand Theft Auto, a fantastic game series. I I initially played, prior to that, I played a game called Driver, which was uh, the amount of interaction that you were able to have with this, like, you know, digital kind of uh, environment was so, like, far and away advanced beyond what you had been able to do in the past. Like, video games are very side-scrollers, or, you know, you might have had open-world games like 
Link to the Past, Zelda, things like that. But it was all kind of very, you know... Cartoonish or stylized. Yeah, and, and kind of almost more linear, kind of on rails. Like, Grand Theft Auto was one of those things that, like, you could literally do whatever you wanted in this game. And, mm -hmm. and the world would, would react to you the way that you were kind of participating in it. If you started to randomly attack people, the police would show up in a... In a amazing amount of these games come out that are all kind of clones like it's a big city you go around there's people in it like even the spider-man games are kind of almost grand theft auto clones at this point like it's kind of just open world city exploration type mm -hmm. of thing so mafia was one of those ones that kind of fell into that vein for me and i never played any of them until three mafia three was one that like people told me was really interesting so i picked it up and ended up like i said flying on the radar i think it ended up like a six um where was mafia three located was uh, it so was it New Orleans? Yes, a fictionalized uh, version of New Orleans called Phone. Phone. <laughs> Fo uh, phone. Is that how you open phones? You just scream at it? Mafia phone. 3, Plan of Jars. What? So it was in right uh, Lincoln Clay. Lincoln Clay was the... He was a Vietnam War veteran. Correct. Not, He's the guy not answering played. your question, Angel. Okay. Hold on. All right, thank you. Uh, it's New like, Bordeaux. Yeah, New Bordeaux. Yes. So Based it's a, on your uh, stats points. Fictionalized you. Uh, yep. you, you version of New Orleans, and nice. basically it takes place, like I said, uh, a couple years after the Vietnam War, where you play a uh, a local man who went to who went to the war and came back to his family, and his family is involved in the sort of underworld of this you know fictionalized uh, new orleans and he gets kind of dragged into this uh working security for someone and then eventually heists start happening and what i will say about the game two things the story was fantastic the acting was fantastic and never it, like the flow was perfect it felt like you were playing a movie every every new quote-unquote mission that you were playing i was like i want to know what happens next they were so varied you were robbing a bank at one point. You were going to help your friend, like, you know, protect his not die store from these like thugs or whatever. It was just like a very cool. You never really felt like tedious, like, ugh. like the Grand Theft Auto games. And, and to a certain extent, Red Dead, we talked about this in my in my review of Red Dead, that it does get to the point with a, a lot of these games where it kind of seems like the mission structure is phoned in. It's OK, get here, hide behind this wall, shoot these dudes until they go away and then grab the briefcase or whatever and then run away and then the dudes are going to shoot at you while you're doing it. And it gets kind of monotonous and boring. Mafia 3 never really felt like that. It was something that flowed really well, felt like a story, felt like a movie you were kind of working through. And the actual action parts of it, there's a certain term for it, like game designers know it's like making the impact of the action kind of felt like external, not just shooting something or punching something, but the way that that feels, the way that the screen will like flash or give you like feedback on it. Like Mafia 3 had, it was very punchy. It made you feel like you were kind of involved in this like action movie while it was going on. So Mafia 3 was fantastic. Uh, Corey Deering said that he uh, heard about Mafia 4, which is coming out. And I did a little bit of research on it. And apparently there's no actual uh release there's no release date there's no uh trailer no footage on it but the 2k uh studios which is the uh, publisher behind this game uh had recently and this is how zealous these people are for this stuff somebody was monitoring like patents that came out or, oh yeah that's so, a good idea so somebody saw that 2k put out a couple of patents yeah. uh for or um initial plans essentially to make a mafia 4 and then also to do a remaster of mafia 2 which i never played but um could be cool. Mafia 3 was really good. They're trending towards something that's going to be really good. And a lot of times, like, Grand Theft Auto 3 was the first one that anyone really, like, cared about. Yeah. Sometimes these series take a couple of games to actually, like, find their stride and, like... Find their footing. Exactly. So I'm intrigued. I'm definitely going to be playing Mafia 4. Corey Deering, good good tip. Um, Corey, friend of the show. Friend of the show. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> in addition to that, I also ran across... And I am... Uh, we've talked about this before. I'm a huge Mega Man fan. One of my first memories as a human being was beating Mega Man 2 running into my mother's room crying <sighs> with the controller I unplugged it for some reason I thought this was like important and gave it to her and was like it's over like I was like I didn't understand because the oh. end of the end we of, talked about this yeah just the it was adorable it was, it's, it's an absolutely adorable story. the end of Mega Man 2 is so like it's melancholy he's like he finally takes his helmet off so you it's can like, tell he's got like hair he's like a normal kind of boy the story of Mega Man is tragic like if you actually get into it it's amazing. Uh, the Proto Men actually uh, is a band that does like kind of chiptune stuff, but they wrote an entire like Queen style rock opera nice. to the story of Mega Man, and it is spectacular. So oh. check it out. Okay, yeah. Uh, the Advantage kind of does that too, but it's more math rocky, like Mega Man level two from the like 
SNES. If we if like, we can really play cool band. Uh, Bubble Man or um, you got it. Anything you want, baby. Yeah, there you go. So yeah, the, the, I will listen to this music just sitting around like doing work, like as a grown man listening to like Mega Man Two level music. Beautiful I, compositions. I loved that game. Uh, so uh, somebody actually told me in random conversation that apparently a um, uh, independent game developer out of Singapore years and years ago I had not I did not know this existed uh, made a mod of Mega Man Two to essentially uh, replace all of the villains with Street Fighter characters. So it's called Mega Man versus Street Fighter, Mega Man X Street Fighter. Mm. So it's Mega Man 2, but instead of going to fight whatever, Bubble Man, Ice Man, you go fight Ryu, or you go fight like Dalsim or whatever. Jesus. And then you get their powers and Blood stuff. Bloodbath waiting to happen. It's an entire like new game, and I was so stoked to hear that there was a Mega Man that I hadn't played. So I downloaded it, I started getting into it. I'll, I'll give like the full review, but it's, it's Mega Man and it's fantastic. Uh, it's it's so good actually that uh, the guy put it out for free. Capcom, the publisher of Mega Man, um, reached out to the guy and said, "Hey, this is amazing. Can we put this out for you?" And they ended up giving him some money, picking it up, and made it an official release. So you can just good go to Capcom. Their, you can go to their website, download it for free. Mega Man X Street Fighter. Uh, in addition to that, I watched a couple episodes of Longmire, which is an A and E uh, oh, Western show. Yeah. Ugh. No? No. 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 I love how that's a no. 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 That's I'm gonna give it like I'm like, we'll truncate the review on this one and I'll it'll all jump to like a two and a half, three beard pulls for it. It's you know, it's it is what it is. It's fine if that's Tell me what you thing. hate about it right now. It's uh, it's just plotting. It's plotting and they don't give you like if you're gonna jump into a a new, you know, storyline plot with something, I need punch right away. Get me involved. Like why do I care? Good point, yeah. Like yeah. a good story starts with a hook, right? And someone the other day said, you don't have a cliffhanger if you don't have a cliff to hang from. That's brilliant. If your show sucks, your show sucks. Right. Kind of riding that wave of the newer kind of Western shows that were coming up, you know, whatever, Deadwood and all that kind of stuff. Mm. So it, it tried. And to me, maybe, you know, I think there's like five or six seasons. I got like halfway through the first season. I'm like, oh. Wow. So it's being bankrolled. Yeah. I don't I, I like it. Not, not my cup of tea. I'm trying to like, kind of dive into the Western kind of uh, storytelling to kind of see what's out there and, you know, make sure I'm not stepping on any toes. But that that to me was something I was just like, Bleh. like, I, I didn't understand why. It, it was like the jag of Western stories. Jag. Oh, yeah. sit there, nice. You're like an old man sitting around like, well, what's going on with Longmire today? For those like, uh, millennials out there, the mail. jag was <laughs> a, it was an Air Force based show back in the 90s. I think it was on Fox. Something like that. Or yeah. maybe TBS. Not not my cup of tea. Much more of a uh, a Deadwood fan. Even like I said, well, like guilty pleasure Justified. Like I watched Justified for six seasons. It was still like tongue in cheek. I was like laughing at Justified. This guy kills a lot of people. I'm like, dude, his body count is nuts. <laughs> but it was still kind of funny. And like, all right, Justified. Sure. What, what do we got today, dude? Like, Wait, take it easy. Lou yeah. Diamond Phillips. Yes, Lou Diamond Phillips is in that. Nice. And you know what? <laughs> nice. I like Lou Diamond Phillips. Yeah. But yeah. no, not not a, not a fan of Longmire. Uh, the thing about Westerns, uh, I think I've mentioned this before, it is the quintessential American genre, whereas yeah. that is the first American genre because uh, The Legend of Sleepy Hollow was still a gothic horror story, but that's been done before. There's some romance, there's some suspense, drama. The Western, the idea of we have this brand new land, it's lush, it's fertile, the, then you cross that one point and there's nothing and try to cultivate that I think that was what they were trying to do for this is like takes place in Montana, like kind of, you know, out, out there, Montana, Kentucky Wy noir. Wyoming or something like that. Kentucky Bourbon noir. noir. Bourbon, Bourbon noir. noir. You, why are you so good at coming up with the, all of these noirs? Just word association. That's a trademark. That's what I do, son. And if you have any suggestions for me to check out any kind of Western stuff that you really enjoy, books, movies, whatever, um, I'm definitely in the market for that right now. I'm kind of cycling through th things. So if it's uh, something that you're interested in and you want to get into, like, let me know. Thank you so much, Kaz. Uh, it is now time to check out. I'm a massive, massive country Western fan. Western is songs as simple as Stampedes, Drinking Cold Water. I am a <laughs> massive Roger Miller fan. Oh, Roger Miller did nice. Chug a Lug, King of the Road. He is a wordsmith. One of my favorite songs. It's called The Moon is High, parentheses, and so am I. In parentheses. Oh, nice. So much fun. He's also uh, the voice of uh, in the Disney to, as a callback. The Robin Hood movie. He is the narrator. No. You know, like Robin Hood and Little really? John. You know, trekking oh, through the forest. Oodalali. 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 That is Roger Miller. He passed away in the early 90s, but um, an, Ameri an American legend. Um, Angela, what you got for us? 
Well, to, to tag on to that a little bit, Orville Peck. I've talked to both oh, of you about Orville Peck recently. Fantastic. If we're going to talk about some Western singing, he's amazing. And he's still around. Yeah, he's still around. He actually was just here. His voice is incredible. So check him out. He is, just has this really neat sound. It's like a sexy country Lana Del Rey. Yeah. He's, Dude. Oh, yeah. my God. That's an apropos yeah, assessment that's the best him. way to Absolutely. describe him. But also tapping into still Orlando, Central Florida. Please go check out Banff Comics and Coffee in Maitland on Horatio. How do you spell that? B-A-M-F. Banff. All in caps. And Comics and Coffee. It's a great... It used to be... It's in a place that used to be a melting pot on Horatio in Maitland. It's owned by Candace, David, and Enzo. And also Enzo has a Enzo comic. Garza. Enzo Garza has his own comic, uh, Gut Ghost. And I have the first issue right here. It's amazing. It's like adorably grotesque. Our style is really cool. It's very his, unique. Yeah, it's he has got his, his character Gut Ghost. It's like this creepy sheet with guts hanging out. It's amazing. <laughs> the humor of it is wonderful. Um, it's modern. Yeah, it's a it very definitely. modern comic. And so this one came out in June, and then the second issue he says is coming out in December. All right. So and so Garza, that's Gut Ghost, G U T T Ghost. Also, Angela, if I might add, at Banff, you might find some things from us we might yes. hide some stuff there yeah we have a couple buttons there yeah so and go there and ask about buttons. fort fritz stuff yes Kaz, what do you have for us so i recently saw a watched all the way through a documentary called the family on netflix um Ugh. this is that not sounds terrifying it is uh-huh. trust me yes Jeez. it's one of like basically goes through uh jeff Charlotte's Charlotte's not Charlotte's Charlotte's book, uh, The Family, The Secret of uh, the Secret Fundamentalism at the Heart of the Fellowship. Uh, the Fellowship is essentially this um, fundamentalist uh, Christian uh, organization that um, organizes the National Prayer Breakfast. Doesn't sound that uh, that scary yet, but um, once you scary to me. Well, once you get into understanding uh, the the kind of background of where where this started, why it started, and why it continues to happen. Um, it is terrifying. Religious freedom is protected by an amendment to our constitution. There are so many countries that mm. don't have that, you know, and right. people are constantly persecuted for their religion. That is scary. Yeah. So they say it multiple times during the actual documentary, but it is a gross overstepping of the boundaries between church and state that, th- that this is happening. And to understand not only how it's affecting local government, but global governments uh, through a man named Doug Coe, who uh, passed away a couple of years ago, I imagine. It is it is supremely scary. Check it out. And this is The Family? The Family on Netflix. Netflix, perfect. Well, coming up next is Bungalower and the Bus. Thank you so much. Please always text us 77031 if you have a question or reach out fritz at realradio.fm. You are listening to Fort Fritz on Real Radio. It's October. Get spooky. Until next time, pleasant dreams.